Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is with Robert Schwenke, uh, the director of the new film, The Captain, that world premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival, and we all get, also get to talk to two actors from the film, and that's pretty rare, Frederick Lau and Alexander Fuling, and I'm so glad they were able to join me today to talk about this new and, and can I say, troubling uh, story about World War II. We get into the issues that matter, it seems to me, right out of the gate. We talk about uh, uh, what... what we talk about the problem of evil. We talk about existential angst and about what it means to to sort of step out of uh, one understanding of the world and into a new one. And it's all told through the lens of basically a uniform. And we talk about what that, uh, the, what, what those implications are, uh, the captain's uniform. And we talk about it from, as Robert is, uh, uh, tells us, a perpetrator's perspective. And he reminds us that it's the only film that's been made out of Germany from a perpetrator's perspective. The war is just about over. We're two weeks out and we see and we uh, get to understand what it must have been like to be, to have been in such a um, insane uh, world. And, and it will, you know, given these opportunities and these choices and uh, to, to, to make, and uh, the question is, you know, which way are we going to go from the Toronto International Film Festival's website with this, quote, rambunctious and unsettling portrait of a man who with mounting bluster becomes intoxicated by his newfound power. Director Robert Schenka has hit on a pertinent metaphor for much of what bewilders us as we watch politicians rise to power with the flimsiest of credentials, close quote. Uh, filmed in black and white, and to say that this is about the greys would be an understatement. Uh, Stay tuned uh, for this conversation about the captain coming right up. DavidPeckLive.com for more information about my uh, speaking and writing. FaceToFaceLive.ca for uh, over 30 interviews this year at TIFF. What a delight and uh, exhausting uh, few days it's been for me. And also Ravel.ca for more information about podcasting, writing, blogging, around issues that matter uh, from a Canadian perspective. Coming right up, Alexander Feeling, Frederick Lau, and Robert Schwenka talking about their new film, The Captain. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by three very special guests here today with us to talk about a new film called The Captain. I'm going to let them all introduce themselves before we dive into a little bit more about what the film's about, but we've got the director with us here. Um, maybe you could go first. Uh, my name's Robert Schwenke. My name is Alexander Feeling. And I'm Frederick Lau. Wow, very, very deep voices. Yeah, of course. There's a, there's a, I see a smile, but there's a, there's a seriousness to the conversation that I think maybe uh, kind of captured pretty well, Robert, in the film. Uh, can, you, can you tell us a little bit? Can you give us a little bit of that context? Because I do want to talk about context of the character itself in the film mm -hmm. and that background, as you say in a former interview, about how important that was for how you teased out the script and, and this idea of good and evil and the contrast and so on. Can you give us a little perspective on this post, uh, well, almost post-World War II story? Um, well, this story takes place in the last two weeks, in the final two weeks of World War II, when the system, the uh, national socialist system, uh, was beaten and was falling apart, yet many people still held on to, you know, the, the, the forms of conduct as they are uh, prescribed and defined by Nazi government. And it results in a very absurd situation mm -hmm. because um, the war is over, but right. you're still concerned with fulfilling your, your duty or what you perceive as your duty. And I think that absurdity um, was very important to us and uh, it informed the tone of the film and a lot of the choices that we made uh, subsequent. Robert, is the war really ever over? Well, I don't think there was a break between war, World War I and World War II. 
Um, but I, th I think everybody worked very hard to at least, you know, finish the physical fighting. I know, you know, Cold War started and all of that. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but I think in Germany or for Germany, it was very important, and for the Allies, it was very important uh, that a, a certain normality returned to Germany quickly. And uh, and I think uh, many discussions that should have been had were not had because of that. There was a myth that we all grew up with that the uh, regular soldiers were clean and were not involved in genocide or massacres, mm. that the SS, the bad Nazis, mm. um, were responsible for for all of those horrible things that happened for the concentration camps. And of course that is true, but it's only partially true. So when in 89, the archives, Eastern archives, Eastern European archives and Russian archives were opened, um, we were confronted with a flood of pictures that had been taken from POW, German POWs, and had been archived, and they showed the truth of the situation, which was that regular soldiers were very much involved, and of course, um, nobody should have been surprised about that, but in Germany it was a pretty big deal when that can was opened. And, uh, and that, there was a big uh, exhibition, Wehrmachtsausstellung, in 89, and it was extremely controversial. I bet. I bet. Are you, are you guys as actors worried at all about being involved in a film that might seemingly still be somewhat controversial? Um. No, quite the opposite, actually, yeah. because if a film is controversial, it makes you think, it makes you talk about it, it makes you um, discuss about it, whatever. So I'm just worried about, or I really um, try, when I read the script, I was trying to find out if uh, if this film is, because I, don't, I, I didn't know Robert okay. uh, before, okay. so of course you 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 really double check if this film sends a message out which you are not you know right yeah which is not right or which you are not um, you you would never encourage someone to do that so but that was not the case um, so and and one of the most interesting things was this movie is is based on facts. Mm. But the characters, I would consider the characters to be not really naturalistic characters. So the playfulness in it and, and these heightened characters, um, yet with realistic motivations. Sure. That yeah. was uh, that was the interesting and striking striking thing when I first read the script. I remember that. Yeah. So I think I've read somewhere that Robert said this film is about uniforms. Oh, uniforms. he didn't tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> they what just it? told me they could have played those characters naked. Yeah. They could have played them yeah. naked. Yeah. Interesting. I think there's and a. Some of them did. I think there's a profound <laughs> philosophical <laughs> philosophical implication to that. We may have to go into that in part two. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean to you? The uniform in Germany and in, in, in any kind of militaristic environment, the uniform is kind of. It's the the way it's done. It's the rule. It's there's power. There's oppression. There's there's privilege. I guess. Yeah, that's all of these things is something that a uniform tells you. Sure. And uh, and um, but to be honest with you, of course, you always have that moment when you put on the uni uniform. You you have that moment that moment when you think, ah, okay, that's what it feels like, or that's what it looks like. But but I always think. You don't know what it feels like, and you don't know. You, you just know how it looks like. Right. You you just know how you look like uh, we're wearing the uniform. That's all you know. And we just talked about that because I think um, the way I, for instance, me, I behaved or uh, moved or whatever. I, I I did it not because of the uniform. I did it because of the character I wanted to play. The character, the motivations of the character, where the character is coming from what were my what what were what am I going for instead of the character that's why am I doing that no, no, not because of the uniform you know what I mean I, th I think I do know what you mean did you either of you uh, and please um, did either of you sort of cross not cross a line but step into uh, a place that was a little too close for comfort I, I maybe I actually could behave I'd this way I could actually live this way or could have lived this way I really don't know because um, I wasn't there, so yes, I yes. just can imagine and stuff. But it's it's really hard to to say. Okay, um, 
I would behave like that, or I would behave like I don't know. So, um, and so um, we really just can, um, you know, I think as it's a group thing for me. It's like right. when you're in a group, it's like you just, you just, uh, you just go for it. I don't think there's mm. so many thinking anymore. Right. It's right. just, um, yeah, you 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 fell into something. Yeah. I would say comfort is not is never the goal for me. I, I never look for comfort right. in, 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 in in any character. So of course you have to feel comfortable playing the character. Of course, yeah. But if you do think about all these atrocities that that took place back then, you you wouldn't be able to play that character. So uniform is a tool. It sounds cruel, but it's yeah. it's a tool. Sure. It's 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 something you you need um, as as a as a as a as, yeah like, like a craft thing in order to play the character that's all and then you forget if how you feel or if you like it or you really have to if you first tested tested your and double checked your moral feelings um, um, towards the material and you're fine with it and you think that there's something interesting in it, then I just go for it, and I never, uh, I never, what um, uh, uh, Judge. I never judge never anything. Judge. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For, for me, it's like when, while acting, I, I like it when it's just um, when it's just happen. You know, when I'm just um, I go out of the scene, and I really don't know what I've done. I really don't hmm. know. Hmm. Uh, I'm into. I'm just in, into into Isn't the that character. Like early Stanislavski. Yeah. Isn't it stepping outside? Almost? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, Take way back. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you, you, so again, you, 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 so you don't. Again, <laughs> it's, it's, it's for me. It's just what like I love it's about feel. It is the intangibility. Like you can't, you can't, you can't really touch it, right? Yeah. It's just something you indwell. Yeah. And and isn't that kind of a part of part of what the film is about? Like the historical, the social, the the context. I mean, how do how do I actually get into that uh, if I haven't, you know, haven't lived it, right? Um, how do we? Because I think, uh, are you, I mean, you're, you're you're not a moralist, I don't think, Robert. I mean, I, I never trust <laughs> the position of the moralist. Um, so it's not about black and white; it's about paradox. No, and it's about yeah, and it's about absurdity, and it's mm. about the gray, and uh, it, it's it's a uh, it's a film about perpetrators, and not perpetrators of the first rank, but perpetrators of the fifth and sixth and seventh rank, um, fascism. National socialism was a very dynamic system, and uh, and the idea that one man brought Germany, you know, to 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 the brink of catastrophe and beyond, right. of course, is preposterous. I mean, somebody had to actually do the work. Right. And um, <clears throat> there, this is the first movie made in Germany uh, from the perspective of the perpetrators. That is not about, let's say, a Rudolf Huss, which is one other film that comes to mind, um, and or about the Wannsee Conference, where the where the final solution was decided. So, so uh, there are two films, exactly two films only, told from the point of view of the perpetrators in Germany. And uh, and I remember seeing Louis Malle's La Comme Lucien, and wondering why don't we have a movie like that why why haven't we made a movie about this and there are also no books there's right. literature is the same issue you know um, and so, so was, was the issue I mean there's so many issues about the, the, a story like this and so many things you could talk about in entry points but was it about justice for you was it about oppression was it about getting beyond as Nietzsche said getting beyond good and evil you know it's it's, it's or no I think I think that um, if you if you watch a movie um, about I'm speaking very generally now. Yeah. Atrocities or bad things happening. And a hotel the, usually, usually the pattern used and the narrative used by those films is to locate you with a character who either changes for the better or is already on the proper moral side of the issue. Right. I feel that a film... A, where you're stuck with the perpetrators and you don't have recourse to you know, a moral position that is acceptable to you, 
I think then the questions you have to ask yourself are different. Right. And you're asking why I wanted to make the film is because I, I want people to think about those questions. You know, what is our, 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 what is our pension to injustice and cruelty? That that sort of lurks in us like right. like poison, and it's asleep. And we're and we're all capable. We're all capable of this it. This isn't and about madness. I, I love exactly. the line that Hitler's a madman. Yeah, I've always loved that line. Hang on a minute. I don't think that he was, right? right. And we all have that potential to go way down b- I, below. I I agree, and and so we live in a you know when 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 I started working on this film, people didn't really see the relevance. Relevance. I'm right. sorry, yes. uh, and uh, and now now they do. Right. Which saddens me a great deal because it you know it's it applies to a lot of things happening right now in of the world it does, yeah. and uh but this question you know to contemplate the abyss is is i think very very important because it's did it's you, did you read a lot of heidegger as a kid uh i uh, i read uh i studied philosophy oh did you okay yeah. good good um, same and so i i think you have to you have to contemplate those things even when they're seemingly not there because they're just slumbering and they will come back. And, and I think if you're caught unpreparedly, then uh, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I think you have to, you ha- it's a prophylactic. I, I, I see this movie as a prophylactic that you ingest on a continuous basis to be aware and thusly keep in check the things we all know we're all capable of. Um, and precisely why great stories, it seems to me, or great films are about, are about, <laughs> are about the conversation. We're waving the microphone around here wildly <laughs> at the actors. That's, uh, that's awesome. Um, so what do, you, what, do you, what do you learn coming out about? That's pretty bleak, difficult, I would say, film, uh, stark and beautiful in its own right. What, what, do, you, what do you take away from it as, as an actor? Do you, do you feel... Is it is it is it is it in any way sort of education? Do you, start, do you, do you I watch a great film and I think I'm a, I hope I'm a better human being. Honestly, as cliche and corny as that sounds, yeah. I hope that I have the opportunity now to tell a new story or to ask some new questions. Yeah, but I haven't seen the movie yet, so <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> right. So really, yes. and um, yes. yeah. So I, I, no, I I, 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 I don't see. learn anything, and you don't. No, I wouldn't say I, I learn anything playing a character in a movie oh, like that. Okay. I learn something when I prepare for a character. Right. When I okay. prepare a certain certain subject matter, then I learn something, right? But um, you learn from discussions about a theme, but not, you know. It, it, there wouldn't be wouldn't be bad characters if you would learn something from them because you don't have people there that, that tell you or educate you in in a certain way. These are people they they just they do what they do and you you just follow the motivations of the character. Um, but maybe I will have another pers- uh, another perspective when I've seen I'm the sure film. Yeah. So I really the can't talk about whole. it right now. Yeah. Um, you say I, I've read somewhere. You said you didn't. W- you don't want to give the audience a way out. You don't want to give them a way. This is this is bleak. This is this is and was the way it was, and, and frankly still is. And is that is that tied into that idea that you know you want people to be reflecting on this stuff uh, more often than not? I guess. Yeah, I think if you in a, in the context of a movie this bleak, uh, people will take any out you give them, right. no matter how small. Right. And. I think most films, again, operate in that fashion. Even films who show violence differently from mainstream films give you some kind of little door, and unfailingly, audiences will go through that door. And we didn't want to give them that door. We, we wanted to... We wanted to force them to keep looking at it. Why is it so easy not to talk about this stuff, you know? Uh, that, and isn't isn't that isn't that the concern? I mean, I work in international development. I, uh, my podcast is about social change. You know, trying to move the needle a little bit uh, in whatever, whether it's with gender justice or environment or whatever. And it seems 
yeah, we'd rather, I don't know, we'd rather surf the web. Is that too cynical? Is that, uh, we'd rather... I think it depends on, on where you, I, I think it depends on where you live. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think depending on uh, where you're from, you would have probably get a lot of discussion from some folks right. about war and, and, and dying and such. It's, it's just not in our cultural context our first thought. It's not the dominating element in our daily life. Right. And I think that's why um, we need to remain aware and awake that, that all those things are slumbering. When I, when I grew up, I never thought for a second, you know, coming, having grown up in Germany and, uh, and uh, you know, having, having moved through the dark ages and come out sort of with the Enlightenment and then we ended up in a liberal, liberal post-World War II uh, country, I would have never thought that there would be religious wars again. Right. It was so we're, completely... We're on the other side now. <laughs> we, it, it, it was unimaginable to me that that would ever come back. And, you know, you were, you were, you were talking about philosophy. You know, yeah, I had this uh, notion that we were moving towards something. That, you know, there, there was... That, that, A more sensible way of... of there, yeah, that we, that we were capable of learning and, right. and, and drawing conclusions. And, you know, I see neo-Nazis on the streets... In America, I mean, it's absurd. I, I find it I, it, it's so. How, how did we get here? It's so absurd. And, and again, I, I, I believe that what has been inherent, implicit, has become explicit, because some folks who have the power to speak publicly and to speak for other people, I assume, have created a rhetoric that is starker and more aggressive and mm-hmm. and. Uh, is, is decidedly different from the sort of rhetoric that, that we have tried to maintain five years ago. It's a story about the past, clearly, two weeks before the, world, the war ends, but so, as you said earlier, so relevant. Were you thinking about that when you started to write, hey, I want to make something that's contextual but speaks to us all today prophetically in some way? Does that make I, sense? Yeah, I couldn't, I, no, I can't really approach a story like that because the mm. story is and the character is so specific and the right. context was so specific I just think if you if you somehow manage to get at a bit of truth in a story that truth will communicate itself and um, you know no, no, nobody I don't think you can work toward a relevance simply because it takes five years to make a film and by the time the movie comes out who knows what's relevant it's true. You, uh, there's, I mean, I, I would argue there's a timelessness to, to any kind of story that is willing to ask more questions mm. than to, to, to uh, po- you know, pre- present answers. Mm. And I don't, think, I don't think this film really presents a whole lot of mm. answers, mm. this story. Do captains, uh, we're going to have to wrap it up here in a couple minutes, uh, sadly, uh, but uh, do, cap- do captains really behave this way? People in p- people in uh, uniforms and positions of power and in, in uh, um, people that you people that you should look up to that you should admire that you should respect. Oh, you know, I don't know. It's just I'm that not transformation in, from the yeah. uniform from before after. It's a big question. It's a big question, and uh, I'm not an expert for captains, but <laughs> <laughs> but which is just might be surprising, but yeah. no, but um, seriously. No, but people tend, and we all, as people, tend to do what we can do. And I think, yeah, that's, maybe that's the deeper, um, the deeper subject matter, and that's what I really believe. And that's not only captains, this, these are politicians, and this Absolutely. is everyone, this yeah. is uh, even in your family. We do what we can do, and it's sometimes it's really it's 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 very hard to stop yourself to not gain for more, right. whatever that more whatever is. Whatever that more is, yeah, it's good. Yeah, power, prestige. Yeah. Uh, final final question. I got so many more questions, and we sadly don't have time. But uh, black and white clearly uh, a pretty uh, conscious decision. Oh, um, there's yeah. a story. Yeah, go. 
No. <laughs> you should do it. No, no, what's the story? What's the story? There is a story. Um, <clears throat> there, there is a, a story, man. There has there, to be. There is an anecdote um, about Martin Scorsese shooting tests for Raging Bull oh, okay. in That's color good. and I showing. Bet there's a few stories about that film. Yes, and, sho- and showing those tests to Michael Powell, who, of course, was one of the great, great directors of all times. And Michael Powell said, you cannot shoot this film in color because of the blood. People will not be able to sit through this. They will not, will not be able to look past the blood and see the story you're trying to tell. It's ridiculous nowadays because there's not, there's not too much blood in that film, right? right? So now they're... Right. right. Now it's different, but... Yeah. Back, we're, we're, back what, to absurd, we're back to absurd again. Yeah. And, and so that, that, was, that was one of the reasons. Um, I also... Uh, needed uh, a level of abstraction for the film. It's not a movie that strives for, you know, sort of the fetishism of authenticity. <laughs> it was almost going to roll right out. I, I, I was going to joke with you and say, I think we're going to have to leave that for part two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Great phrase, by the way. Um, and, Do we have um, time for you to unpack that a little bit? <laughs> that, that blurring, that line between sort of true and... True, and that's small long. T and that's true, long. capital T. Yeah, that's long. <laughs> yeah, um, and so and so so that as well. Black and white would would give us a little bit of abstraction. And then, you know, when you look, I grew up with many many pictures and films of a documentary nature about the time, and they were all in black and white. And right. I, and I think right. it's there's an ingrained thing about how we view the past. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, when I when I think of thank you when I think of um, uh, uh, World War Two, I think of black and white. Yeah. I don't think it actually happened in color. Does that, does that make yeah, sense? It like, wasn't. It's it's just it's too it's too absurd. It's too yeah, extreme. But the truth it's, is it happened. In color. The truth is it happened in color. <laughs> it happened yeah. in color. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Exactly. And but I think we haven't we haven't seen it in color. Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. That's nice. I like it. So I like it. Guys, thank you so much. Congratulations. I didn't say that right out of the gate. And, and I can't believe you haven't seen the film yet. That's an outrage. That's, I can't uh, believe you have. I know. I know. <laughs> I can't, I can't that's, that's, that's a scandal. <laughs> it's a scandal. Thank, thank, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.